This is going to be a problem. <laughs> I'm going to need another card. <laughs> Spin! <laughs> well, hey, everybody. I'm Joshua. And I'm Caleb. And did you know we're related? We're brothers. Through brotherhood. You, you know, brother, I was, I was thinking about a song that we used to sing in church many years ago. Okay. It came to my mind. You might remember it. It went a little bit like this. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly over the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, yes sir. sir. Oh, you that, that brings song? back memories. Man, that was a good song. That Both good and bad memories. Getting in trouble in Sunday <laughs> school and remembering awesome songs. So then, you know, it, it started to just drop in my mind. Yeah. What exactly is the purpose of an army? Well, if you look at the structure and, and what I got established, I'll stop you right there, Caleb. Yeah. I'm going to stop you right there. It's super simple. It's very easy. It's to defeat the enemy. You have an army. You have an army because you are trying to win. <laughs> defeat the enemy. Protect your team. That's why it exists, right? So, you know, then my, my head started to really, really hurt because I started thinking about the best armies of all time. You know, I was thinking about what made them so good. You know, if you look at Napoleon Bonaparte's army, uh, when he did no. the battle, listen, Captain Encyclopedia, it's a, it's super simple again. Okay. It was one word, discipline. The discipline. It wasn't being short and French that made all these armies good, <laughs> although he was both of those things. Uh -huh. It was discipline, being highly trained and disciplined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now my point, because oh. I know that you're impatient with me and getting to points, because I tend to ramble, is that if I'm in the Lord's army, yeah, okay, okay. and tomorrow there was an academic decathlon okay. for armies, yeah, okay, and within this competition. It was the Lord's army, and I don't know, let's say the Muslim army, and uh, the Mormon army, and uh, maybe the Scientology army, okay? And we, uh, we were all in an academic decathlon to see whose army was best. Who would win? Yeah, yes. yeah exactly. I, I can hear the crickets up there. Oh, I can see man. David up there shaking his head. Who You know, he's slain his tens of thousands. Um I'm not, I don't know who would necessarily win in that ac academic decathlon. Um, how did it happen? That's the big question I want to ask. How did we, as believers of the one true Lord and Savior, yeah. how did we potentially get to the place where our army is technically weaker than the other armies out there who are dedicated to their faith. I, I thought I was the one who usually says offensive things that people are going to be typing in posts. Everybody thought it's Bizarro Argh. Day, right? Everybody's flipped around. I'm acting like Caleb. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah. if I have to be honest with myself, okay. and, and I am going to warn you guys, I'm going to be the one that's saying all the things y'all don't like today. He had nothing to do with this. This is all on me. <laughs> Yes, so maybe his near 40 years of rubbing off of me have finally made something. But I think it's because the model of our church has become something like this, okay? Yeah. It's an equation. Skinny jeans plus fog machines <laughs> equals spiritual warrior. <laughs> you have all these things in your church, and you're guaranteed both attendance, yeah. tithes, and growth. Yeah. You're going to be the best. You're going to be the most popular. Well, you know, I say we look at what the original New Testament church went through and what they designated as a strong group of believers, you know, what Paul wrote about as being, you know... I think that's fantastic. Let, and I'm willing at, to suggest that if we look at these scriptures, you're not going to see the three things that I just listed. How about 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 31? For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not the hand, I am not of a body, is it therefore not of a body? And if the ear should say, because I am not of an eye, I am not of a body, is it therefore not of a body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the smelling be? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in a body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? You know, it felt good to choose a really long verse for you to read this Thank week. You. Just, Thank you. Just to try to trip just me Just to have fun. No, you know, it's good. <laughs> you know, the first century church was a close-knit family. 
They weren't just a group that went to one facility one time a week and sat there for 60 to 120 minutes, said hi to Joan, got mad at the person that sat in their usual spot, uh, tried to see who was willing to go eat at them with Applebee's, but not too many so the wait would be longer. You know, they, they met with each other on a daily basis. It actually says that they, they went to the temple together. And in Acts 2.42, yeah. picks up uh, right after where Peter holds the first church service. Because remember, we had the day yeah. of Pentecost, yeah. right? 3,000 came to well, Yeshua. They, they go out there because they're hearing all the stuff, and Peter gets up there and he leads the first church service. That's right. Uh, and it says 3,000 people were led to repentance that wow. day. And so, right here, we pick up in Acts 2 42 through 48, yep. it says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now, all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. Think about that for a wow. second. I mean, mm -hmm. that take, that's like potluck on steroids. That, like, if, if you were ever raised <laughs> that is a in, lot in a potluck, potluck church, that's breaking bread, potluck on steroids. You know? uh, it, 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 think about that for a second. They met daily breaking bread in yeah. each other's houses. Yeah. They took all of their possessions yeah. and they split everything up based on need. Yeah. They continued in one accord. They had unity. They had provision. Yeah. Why did they have all this? Because they were one group that took care of each other. Verse 47 says, yeah. Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Yeah. Very interesting. I've worked in many churches. I've worked for many yeah. ministries over yes, the years. Yeah. And yeah. I've sat in many meetings where they talk about how we can get church attendance up. I'm not attacking that. But it was very simple right here. All they were trying to do was be a community. And from their choice to focus on Yeshua yeah. and to come together and to take care of each other, it says daily their numbers were added to. So it wasn't like they had a big jumbo screen that they got or they added laser tag, you know, in their building and Wait, all these crazy things. There's church laser tag now? <laughs> I, I, there's churches that have shopping malls in them. I mean, it's gotten kind of crazy, but... They try to use those methods to pull people in. This was different, is what you're yes. talking about. It was different, and also it was not just a spectator sport. They were all engaged. One of the things that you know, church has really become is mm. a place to go and sit and spectate for 60 minutes. And I, I, I pick on yeah. the one hour. Not every church has a one hour service. Some of you guys still rock strong with three and a half hours. <laughs> and that's probably why the one that's hour was you. invented. Um, <laughs> but it's still the same spectator. They, they, yeah. they come and they sit and they leave. Yeah. But these people were all coming pursuing God together. Yes. They were uh, pursuing what he had for them and, and the knowledge as individuals who didn't have something and were hungry for more. That's right. So how... Do we differ today in our church model? How does that make us weaker as compared to other religions out there? You well, know? The, the way the way it makes us weaker is is pretty simple. You know, I we we share so often on on this channel um, all of the deep theological, philosophical, prophecy based Bible teaching. A lot of this stuff, I'll be honest with you, even even when I first start reading the scripts, I'm like, whoa, oh, okay, it's it it seems hard to keep along. I love that the precepts of God, once you get through all that, are very simple. That's right. That He wants it to be very simple. And in fact, He says, He gave you a brain, use it. Yeah. Common sense. Not, not, in yeah. the, not in the question of the, the, the mind of man thinks the things of God are done, but He gave you a brain to be able to use it, use common sense. Yeah. And when we talk about discipline and we talk about being engaged, yeah. that's one of those common sense things. So when I look at other religions, okay. when I look at those other teams I mentioned, for instance, I'm not picking on them, but these are ones that are pretty much dominating the game. If there was a Super Bowl scorecard, you know, we're here oh, at halftime goodness. and the Muslim faith has 12,682 million points. Why, why is that? You know, um, because of their dedication. Now, I've yeah. traveled all over the world. I've been to 40 yeah. countries, all 50 states. Yeah. I spent a lot of time um, in countries in the Middle East as well. And I remember that uh, in India, I've been to India seven times. And most of the time I was sleeping on a hut floor. I was in an orphanage or places like that. Yeah. And it's very interesting that at about 5 a.m. or sometime before the sun comes up, as I'm sleeping, covered in, you know, all the stuff, oh, 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 all of a sudden the prayer call comes across the entire city. Wake I mean, up. if this happened in an HOA in America, all of a sudden, <laughs> like, that person would be banned from living yeah. in this state. 
forever. But all of a sudden, all those, mm. all those people who are the Muslim faith would get up. They would stop whatever they were doing. They would yeah. lay down their little mat. They would face the right direction. I don't know if they all have compasses or they just knew where Mecca was. Yeah. But they all leaned down. And they diligently pursued and followed their faith. This also went for knowing the teachings of their That's Bible, true. the Quran. Discipline. They have discipline. And it's not just uh, with the Mormon faith. You, I said Mormon. Oh, I meant the Muslim. Muslim faith, yeah, yeah. but I guess it is with a Mormon faith as well. well isn't you it? know, you know. I, I wonder if, if you've ever, if you've ever been in your living room. Maybe it's on a weekend. Maybe you got home from work. You're in your favorite recliner. You just sat down. You got a nice cold beverage right here. Maybe yeah. you got some snacks over here. You were about to watch your show, and right as you got into that full position, the worst thing ever happened. You hear a ding dong from the door. <laughs> Now, if you're me, you immediately hit pause and don't move at all, hoping that whatever's at the front door's vision is based on movement. Yeah. Then you have some animal that starts barking and alerting the people outside that you are there. So then I carefully sneak to the front door. Uh -huh. um, I go up to the peephole, which is usually at my belly button because I'm tall. And what do I see through there? But two young gentlemen with <laughs> clip-on ties, short sleeve white shirts, and name badges uh -huh. on. That's right. Those are my lovely brothers of the Mormon faith. Yeah. And they're standing there to share the good news of what they claim is the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let me tell you something. If you uh -huh. think you're a fantastic follower of Yeshua, if you think you follow his precepts, mm. go talk to a Mormon man who you can't offend, no matter how mean you get. Yes. They must never get, like road rage must not be a thing for Mormons. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's why they ride bicycles. Is there enough bicycles? I can't have yeah. caffeine. If I get in a car, I'm going to sin. I don't know, but they oh. are genuinely some of the nicest people I've ever met. They are. They're morals that they follow yes. from a from a moral standpoint are incredible and when you talk to them and they talk to you about the word not only do they know their book not only do they know their interpretation of the bible they probably know it better than you do yeah. and you end up coming off feeling dumb and uh, and ill-equipped and so you push them out the door like a salesman like oh i don't want any more girl scout cookies i'm gonna die yeah. and they're like we're praying for you still yeah. you're like, uh, uh. so if you're not equipped um you're you're gonna be Look, you're going to look like an idiot because they're ready, they're prepared, and they send these people out prepared. But we in the church, you know, what is our purpose here, Josh, as a church? To draw men unto God? We're supposed to draw people in the church, but we're doing it the wrong way. Um, and and it's, it's not the discipline. It's not the reading of a word that we should do. We're doing it with, with just things and trinkets and, and modern um, distractions, I believe. Well, we are doing with modern distractions. Um, we think a lot of times that what the problem that we have with the quote unquote Christian faith is that um, we need more of what I have to say. Yeah. And I, maybe I'm wrong in that, but I assume that because it's hard to drive down a street in anywhere in Midwest America and not see at least 10 churches on the way to wherever you're going. I know that where I live, there are literally five churches within one mile radius of my house that I've never visited. There's one that's popped up within the last couple of months. Yeah. They all have very modern art on the front and some unique name and this and that. We have all of these buildings and all of these models. And yet somehow, with having all of these church facilities, mm. I don't know how many are in their congregation, but all these great words from the pastors, these things are streamed online so yeah. that you can see them live. You can get every convenience you want. Somehow, per capita, we're still losing statistically on everything. We have the mm -hmm. highest rates of divorce. We have, we have mm -hmm. the highest rates of all the bad things happening. Mm -hmm. Most Christians can't quote the Bible. They don't know why they believe what they believe in. Maybe they started off because their parents made them and then they dwindled off or they go out of the yeah. obligation for one time on Easter or one time yeah. a week because it becomes a moral band-aid for you. Yeah. You will quote the verse that says, don't forget, don't forsake the gathering together of believers, <laughs> yeah. but you just use that so that the guy that doesn't go to church, you can mock him and tell him that he's, you know, a, a sinner for not doing that. Yeah. Well, people think they just show up to church and that's going to be enough. You know, that's their ticket to heaven or, or ticket to morality in the world and in yeah. America. That's going to be enough. I understand. You don't all feel called to be pastors. That's not what I'm asking you to do. I'm simply saying if I show up to the gym, but I sit on a bench with 300 pounds on the bar yeah. and I sit Sit there for 60 minutes and do nothing other than sit there. I will leave just as obese, just as out of shape, or just as weak as I entered. If I go there five days a week and still sit on that same yeah. bench for 60 minutes, it's going to do the same thing. Nothing. Yeah. Because showing up is not enough to bring change into somebody's life. Okay. You actually have to take steps and apply discipline for growth. Wow. 
it seems like a mean concept. I sound super legalistic for saying this. You sound like me. <laughs> I, I sound mean, so like you. Sound you. Mean. What is no, that? Mean? Um, How do we fix this? Is my question. I'm right. going to get to that because I'm a man that likes to present options. But I, I, okay. I want to a, B, or C. I, I, I want to, to you to get into this perspective again. If you were to go to a surgeon, <laughs> okay, okay, and this surgeon was going to operate in any part of your body, and you inquired of the surgeon of their credentials, and he said, "Do not worry, yeah. I study this topic." 60 minutes a day, once a week, as I have since I began this. That is the yeah. only thing I've ever done. Um, I haven't really performed a lot of surgeries, but I have read this article every week. You know, I've listened to them talk about it. That's not the guy that you're going to vote to choose. The guy with you're going to see the guy that went. That's right. Forget surgeons. We're not all doctors. Yeah. In America, yeah. the minimum obligation of education that is required of everybody is that you go from kindergarten to 12th grade, 13 years of basic schooling to learn, yeah. to have the basic knowledge of a functioning adult, eight hours a day for 13 years. Mm -hmm. When you're there, not only do you listen, but you're quizzed and you're tested on the information. Mm -hmm. To pass through to each grade, you are tested on the information to see that you have a proper efficacy of that information to be able to go into the next and higher level of education to continue to go. Mm -hmm. And this is all so that you can just work at Taco Bell one day. That's not even talking about you getting into the it's higher GED, levels of education yeah, yeah, and degree like, and everything else. So, so masters, you knowing know, that, GED. again, I'm proving that attendance alone uh -huh. and just going there for that one time is not going to mm -hmm. educate you enough, is not going to bring you closer in relationship with the yeah. Father, and it's not going to bring you in closer relationship with one another. Yes. Now, if... A college, if you can pick any college in town and you can go into these colleges and one professor can sit and can train on a collegiate level 300 plus students mm -hmm. on a daily basis and get them to ask questions and get them to take tests and quizzes, then why is our model for the church that once was daily communion, daily bread breaking, daily yeah. giving of ourselves, daily asking of questions and interaction become a once a week affair? I know your churches have home groups and things like this, but mm -hmm. herein lies the problem. When what we seek after alone mm -hmm. is the entertainment or the show, mm -hmm. when all of our resources go into the building itself, when we try to get as many people into one spot at one time and efficiency is the sole rule of gathering together of the believers, mm -hmm. then how can you be sure that those believers are held responsible to learn, listen, to ask questions, to grow? I do believe that the reason why our army statistically is not as strong as the armies of the enemy or the armies of these other false religions mm -hmm. is that we have foregone our responsibility to be a participator and not just be a spectator mm -hmm. in what we claim to believe in. And that if the ministries today would stop focusing on everybody being in just one place, mm -hmm. if the idea of the home group was more the dominance of the church and we didn't care as much about the building mm -hmm. or it, we cared about the uh, celebrityism of the pastor and being in awe of the people on stage, the performance of the music alone, which is meant to be worshiping God and not to entertain you. If you turned off and stopped saying, I don't like that place, I didn't feel like it fed me. Mm -hmm. If you stopped making it about you and started making it about others and making it about the Father, and we shifted our model for that, that is how we are going to fix today's church. Right. When, when we... Let's say your congregation still has that building and still has your yeah. 10,000 members. Let's change the model. Okay. Let's hold each other responsible. Let's ask each other mm -hmm. questions and make sure that we have the knowledge and the understanding. Let's give of ourselves. Everybody wants to give in the tithing offering. Mm -hmm. They gave everything they had and distributed it to who was in need. Yeah. There wouldn't be need. The church was designed to feed and clothe the poor and the elderly and the widows yeah. and everything else that's said in the book of James. It is our responsibility. Yeah. So, you know, I got notes. I got all the stats. It doesn't really matter. I'm not going to get into any more. I just want to remind you and challenge you mm -hmm. and give what I consider is applicable device. Mm -hmm. If you think that you're called to the ministry, instead of going out and getting a more, another mortgage on another space, if everybody has a home, everybody has a place, everybody has a park, get together with like-minded people. Mm -hmm. Begin to study the Word as though it's a course study like you're going to be graded on it, like you're going to have to perform surgery with it. Mm. If you don't know something, ask of somebody else. Collaborate together. Pray together. Seek out the needs of those around you. Seek out the needs of those in your neighborhood. Begin to forget being a spectator and act as though your calling is to be the one in that pulpit. 
there was no pulpit before then. It was all of them together and going out. Yes. And I believe when we do that and we change our heart, then you don't have to be mad about me dissing <laughs> your church or saying that you're a big mega church and this is this and this wrong. I'm just saying if we have all these resources and this time and all these people, let's be effective with it. Let's make our army strong mm -hmm. and let's get our stats up from the bottom and up there to where the Father is pleased with yes. those who call themselves believers. Because... I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, yes sir. sir. <laughs> and we don't want the song to be like, I'm in the Lord's army. Yeah, yeah, Nobody yeah, wants yeah, to be yeah. on the losing team, and we're not going to lose. We're yeah, going to win. Winning. We are on the winning team. Yeah, yes, so we are. Get yeah, it together. I love you, and hopefully next season I can be the real me again. He <laughs> gives you all, all the hugs. I like funny and Josh. He gives you all the I, I don't like it when Josh tears me. Josh, you're so things. mean to me today. Why did you mean, mean to me, to Josh? You? I love you. <laughs> Biblically. Wait, no. With the love of Christ. There you go.